It's Saturday morning, the 13th of April. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and it's time for another 737 MAX update. In the previous update, we discussed the Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 preliminary accident investigation and from a pilot's perspective, looked at the pilot's response to the emergency as compared to the published procedures in the manual for the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. And if there was one thing we could all agree on out of that discussion is that there was no reason for the poorly designed initial iteration of MCAS in the 737 MAX that would put these pilots into this precarious position to begin with. So today I want to discuss the changes that Boeing and the FAA are making to the MCAS system and get the 737 new MAX line of aircraft airworthy and back in the air. My sources for today's update will be from the FAA, from Boeing Aircraft, and from Aviation Weekly and Space Technology Magazine. On March 11th of this year, one day after the Ethiopian Airlines crash, the FAA issued a continued airworthiness notification to the international community, and part of this notification included the following, ongoing oversight activities by the FAA, which include Boeing's completion of the flight control system enhancements, which provide reduced reliance on procedures associated with required pilot memory items. Remember, in the first iteration of MCAS, this required the pilots to quickly do two memory items, unusual airspeed or instrument indications, followed by runaway stabilizer trim. The FAA anticipates mandating these design changes by Airworthiness Directive no later than April 2019, and they are recommending the following design changes to the Boeing 737 MAX. MCAS activation enhancements, MCAS AOA signal enhancements, and MCAS maximum command limit. They will also update training requirements and the flight crew manuals as well. Now let's go look and see what Boeing is doing. We're getting a clearer picture now and further guidance on why we even have the maneuvering characteristics augmentation system in the new 737 MAX series of aircraft. MCAS is not a stall prevention system in itself. MCAS is nearly, well, is primarily a system that allows the new 737 MAX aircraft to have a single type rating, the same type rating requirement as all the previous iterations of the 737. What they found with the 737 MAX is that with the design changes and the new engines, engines at light weights and aft CG, the MCAS system is to augment the maneuvering characteristics in a high angle of attack situation with the flaps retracted, hand flying the aircraft, to replicate the same feel as earlier versions of the 737 by adding a little bit of nose down trim. The new Boeing 737 MAX aircraft is an inherently stable design, just like all the previous 737s, but with the new design configuration changes, the nose gets a little bit light under these conditions and MCAS is to help offset that with a little bit of nose down trim so that the new MAX aircraft feels and flies like all the previous iterations of the 737. And in fact, in simulator testing, with the MCAS system turned completely off, seasoned 737 pilots could barely notice the difference between the handling characteristics of the new 737 MAX with the MCAS off versus previous versions of the 737. The significance of the single type certificate or single type rating for the pilots is to save money. That saves money in training costs and it allows operators to continue to operate the 737 line of aircraft without completely getting a whole other type rating to, for the pilots to fly these aircraft. These changes were also designed to be subtle enough to not require any additional simulator training for the pilots transitioning from the original 737 to the new MAX series of aircraft. A quick recap of how MCAS works in a nutshell and covered in previous updates. MCAS takes angle of attack input from the angle of attack vanes located on the side of the aircraft right below the cockpit. 
takes those signals into the computers and through the flight control computer system and adds a nudge of nose down stabilizer trim to augment the flight controls in high angle of attack situations with FCG. But as we're learning now, the original MCAS design proved to be much too powerful. In fact, in simulator testing of the original MCAS system, if left alone, the MCAS could get the 737 MAX in a unrecoverable situation in as quickly as 40 seconds. Remember, each burst of the original MCAS would give 10 seconds of nose down trim, wait five seconds, give another 10, and it would drive the stabilizer trim. It had the power to drive the stabilizer trim to the full nose down position. So what is the new software load P12.1 gonna do for us? It's finally gonna add the necessary redundancy and reduce the power of the MCAS system to make it a much more manageable system for air crews. First thing they're gonna do is use inputs from two, both angle of attack indicators simultaneously. Remember the original system just used one angle of attack indicator and then on the next flight, the system would swap over and grab the other angle of attack vein and start using that input and it would go back and forth, but it had no redundancy. So the new software load is gonna use inputs from both angle of attack veins on the sides of the fuselage and it's going to disable MCAS if there's a difference of only five and a half degrees between the two veins. The new software package will also have triple redundant filters that prevent one or both angle of attack systems from sending erroneous data to the flight control computers that could falsely trigger an MCAS. It also has design protection to prevent runaway horizontal stabilizer trim from ever overpowering the elevators. The flight control computer's triple angle of attack validity checks include an average value reasonability filter, a catastrophic failure low to high transition filter, and a left versus right AOA deviation filter. If any of these abnormal conditions are detected, MCAS is inhibited. In other words, if either angle of attack indicator or either angle of attack vein differs by five and a half degrees, the system is cut out. If one of the angle of attack veins fails completely, the system is cut out. And finally, if the average of the two angle of attack indicators are completely out of line, the system is cut out. The power of the MCAS system is now greatly reduced. No longer will it be allowed to run the stabilizer to a full nose down position. The MCAS downstab trim is limited so that the elevator always can provide at least 1.2 G of nose up pitch authority to enable the flight crew to recover from a nose low attitude. In other words, you'll always be able as the pilot now to override any MCAS inputs and get the nose pointed back up away from the ground at a rate of 1.2 G's. G's, you know, one G standing here on the ground, that's 1.0 G's. So you're gonna be able to still apply positive G to get the aircraft away from the ground. Second, if the pilot makes electric pitch trim inputs to counter MCAS, MCAS will not reset after five seconds and repeat subsequent nose down stab trim commands as was the original design. And third, if MCAS nose down stab trim input exceeds limits programmed into the new software, it triggers a maintenance message in an onboard diagnostic system. So the changes to MCAS brings the system back to what it was originally designed to do, slightly augment the longitudinal stability of the new 737 MAX aircraft and prevent a single angle of attack vein failure from completely throwing off the entire system and overpowering the pilot. If an AOA failure does occur and leads to an unreliable airspeed indication, a pilot can revert to the memory items 
fly the airplane, achieve a pitch and known pitch and power setting, and be able to overcome any MCAS inputs. Why this system wasn't designed correctly in the first place and how it got certified is going to be the subject of ongoing investigations for quite some time. Once this MCAS system is ironed out, I'm confident the new 737 MAX series of aircraft will prove to be a very safe and very reliable airliner aircraft. Automation is a fact of life in the aviation industry and is going to become more so in the future. Why? Because in the end, automation helps to save lives. It's only when the automation fails and you got to do that pilot thing, that's when you got to rely on basic stick and rudder flying, hand flying skills. That's my excuse why, why I tell my wife I keep the Luscom around here to keep my hand flying skills current. It's a perishable skill. It's something that you need to do regularly to keep current on, to keep updated on. I just got back from my landing currency sim in the 737. Every 90 days you got to have three landings. Sometimes you don't get that as a FB or an FC or if you're on an extended uh, winter vacation. Correction, the Boeing 777 sim, I'm talking about the 737, but I'm current and qualified on the Boeing 777. And the first thing we did was a visual takeoff approach and landing. Just hand fly the aircraft, turn all the automatic stuff off, and hand fly the aircraft to get that feel for the airplane. Because most of the time, you are on autopilot. Are we becoming over-reliant on automation? Well, yes, not just the new pilots, not the young pilots, but all of us that have been flying for years, we spend so much of our time on autopilot to keep things safe and to keep things, um, to, to keep from getting overly fatigued that we need to continuously brush up on our hand flying skills. And aviation is always on the leading edge of technology for other industries as well. And that's why I love being in the aviation industry. And you're, you're, you're hanging out with some of the smartest folks in the room, as you can tell in some of the comments sections below in, in this video series. Um, and this automation is going to trickle down to the automotive industry so that at some point we can reduce this horrible 40,000 fatalities per year in the United States caused by automobile crashes. Automation is coming to the automotive industry soon. You can count on it and it's gonna greatly improve safety. See you here.